Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to this October greenhouse tour. So the greenhouse has been completely cleared out, washed, yes I cleaned all that glass with a soft brush and soap and bubble wrapped and now I have nearly finished bringing all of my tender plants into the greenhouse for overwinter storage. And so it is time for an October greenhouse update. So welcome to the greenhouse and everything looks really good from this position but if we look down here you can see that it's still very much a work in progress. So down here I have some stuff to put away including some pelagoniums that I have just cut back and sprayed for pests. So I need to check those before I put them away. My Brugmansia which has been planted here in the greenhouse border and it's been in here for a little while, is doing really, really well. We have lots and lots of these orange trumpet flowers coming and they do such a great job of just brightening up this October. And we have lots more up here. And this is despite hard cutting this plant back. I had to take off a, a lot of branches and that was because unless I did so I wouldn't be able to get the bubble wrap up but I hope the plant will tolerate that and go on to flower for me all winter. In fact I think I prefer the look of it now because it had a lot of congested branches there at the back which even if they did flower you wouldn't be able to see the flowers very well so now it's just a lot more light and airy. And beside the Brugmansia on this side of the greenhouse where we actually have a border I have put a lot of my big plants. So one of my tree ferns, the second one isn't in yet, the Bartlettina which is this beauty here and my Robinson Crusoe Palm which has decided to display unsightly leaves and I'm not quite sure why, perhaps uneven watering but at least the new growth is looking good. And in here are the, the new leaves which have no blemishes on them at all. Here beside it is the Bartlettina. Now this is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant that has blue flowers and I hope that it will grace me with them this winter. Beside that we have my Protea which I hope will flower again, the tree tomato, the papaya which has super duper leaves, the tree tomato as well, really really luscious leaves and Behind it in there is the fuchsia, boliviana, which I'm waiting to get seed from. And here we have my albizia tree. I love the foliage on the albizia tree. Now this is the chocolate one, so it has dark foliage. But the foliage so reminds me of the sensitive plant. You know the one where if you touch it, it kind of curls in. But this plant doesn't do that. And down there I see the seed of my fuchsia. Come on, come on, ripen. And of course this seed will be given away in membership to people who are members of the channel. I'm really hoping that the greenhouse won't be so cluttered this year. And this is a garden table, I, which I usually bring in here just to hold plants. So this is where the aeoniums are going to go and I haven't dug those up yet, but I will soon. And as you can see, we still have lots of space. Down here we have my two Fercreas, which twin Fercreas, which were grown from bulbils and still in pots. And these make great, great garden plants in summer. I just put them in a border and forget about them. They take whatever water they can from the rain and they never cause any trouble. 
one year they will flower for me but that'll be the end of them so I'm not really looking forward to that too much and of course in the corner here we have my giant alocasia which you saw me repot not very long ago and I will just be keeping it here in this pot over winter and just beside the alocasia there we have some shelving with various things on it some proteas here at the front and there's my trevisia it's lovely lovely leaves i love that cymbidium collection just here to the right down below we have cilogeny and that lalia that lives in the greenhouse ha this is the oxyopetalum epiphyllum and it's going to flower again this is the night flowering one so so cool and speaking of epiphyllums i have put my epiphyllums here and down below and these are such prickly difficult customers to store but the flowers the flowers are absolutely amazing when they come and moving over here just behind a little table there's a little table we'll see that better from the front we have some more stuff in the corner including those two giant lobelias and my abyssinian banana which is drying out and then we have the staging here which i guess we'll go through in a bit more detail and the staging is composed of a variety of plants which need good light and stay on top here and down below we have succulents that don't fit above basically and a lot of bulbs mostly south african bulbs over here and then down at the very front we have well i guess more south african bulbs but the big boys and then we have an agave as well. But I really want to spend a little bit of time and talk through the stuff on the top of the staging because that's what's looking great at the moment. Here we have, in this pot here, are some gladiolus bulbs. Gladiolus tritus, which is a very, I guess quite rare, tender gladiolus. And this is a variety that has very unusually coloured flowers, really, really attractive thing. And just over here a little bit, we have a couple of aloes that I grew from seed. This one here with the red spines, isn't it? Quite attractive, but quite prickly. But the second one, okay, the second one is over here. And this is supposed to have yellow spines tips of the spines are quite yellowish whereas if we move over to the other one the spines here are really quite orangish and in front of the yellow spined one we have what somebody termed as such a cool little punk, and he absolutely is. And this is, of course, a euphorbia. Euphorbia is such an enormous group. So many plants in that group, from succulents that really sting you like cactus, to perfectly garden-worthy plants. But anyway, this guy here, my son absolutely loves, and I always when we go into the greenhouse, get him to point out which plant is his favourite. And recently he's been pointing out this fella, because look at the gorgeous red spines. Now they're not gorgeous if you touch them. And then it has started with these side growths just recently, which we were wondering if they were going to be flowers, but no, I think this is just what this plant wants to do. And it has white spines as well down below, so it's really quite... <laughs> A multicolored punk, really. And then just moving further over, gorgeous aeonium here. This one is an aeonium, 
And both of these cuttings, they're two cuttings in a pot, were taken from the same plant. But look how much yellower the one on the right is to the one on the left. We have a cute chrysula down here. Maybe I showed you this on the last tour because it really is. It's a pretty thing, isn't it? And the way it's habit means it kind of droops down. Super thing. And then moving over here further to the right. Oh yeah, we have this big begonia here at the back. And this one is Carolina folia, I believe. A super codex begonia. And look there, that's the structure that sits proud of the earth. Gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And the new leaves, so, so exciting. But the mature leaves are also really good. Now, maybe in slightly too small a pot. Um, I need to read whether or not I can leave this one in the greenhouse over winter. I can't remember. Okay, next thing. This is exciting. This next door is a nerine. And it's a hybrid nerine that I recently bought from a garden that was closing its doors. And it was not supposed to flower this year, but there is one amazing bud. Look at that. Now it looks like it sustained a little bit of damage in there for some reason. But this is supposed to produce pink flowers with a purple wavy edge. And I absolutely can't wait for this beauty to come into bloom. They weren't supposed to flower this year because they had been divided. And I have a pot here with a generous four bulbs in it. So that's, that's exciting. Okay, right in front we have Gastrolia, green ice. And doesn't it just have super markings? I really, really love this plant. So compact and the markings all along the edge of the leaves very distinctive very pronounced very very beautiful makes a very handsome pot plant oh just <laughs> okay that's a hatiora which suffered a lot last winter i thought i had lost it but look it's bounced back and that will flower early in spring so i decided to put it up on the shelf this time so i don't miss it at all but look 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 so exciting we have rain lily just about to open. Now this is the Frantis carnia. And beautiful, beautiful flowers that only last for a short time. I've already had grandiflora, the Frantis grandiflora in bloom this year. And now we have this one coming. And the trick, I believe, with the rain lilies is to give them what they ask for. And they ask for it in their name. These are ones that are prompted into growth by bursts of rain. And I drenched these coming into autumn. And I have three, three coming up. What a shame we didn't get to see it open fully. Oi. Okay, behind it we have a codex plant, and this is one that is just coming into flower. Now you mightn't think that's a codex plant, but if I can show you in here, you can see that there is a structure there that sits on the soil, and when this goes dormant, you don't, like, um, that's all you see. But at the moment we have these lush, soft, very, very apple green leaves, really beautiful soft texture to them. And I love this plant and I love the contrast between the apple green leaves and these lipstick-like orangey red flowers. It's just coming into flower now. I think it should have gotten got going earlier. So I may actually bring that into the house for the winter just so that the cold weather doesn't force it too early into hibernation. And then just moving along, some more things that are looking good. My cyclamen collection, 
all three of them got repotted this year and this is the first one to come into flower looking really really good behind it we have this gorgeous gorgeous pelagonium a pelagoniums you look on as pot plants that your auntie has in her house or your mum has in her house but look at this for a kick-ass pelagonium with its peeling bark and this one is from St Helena's Island which is in the middle of absolute nowhere and that's where you get the best most unusual plants the middle of nowhere where they're endemic and they've been isolated and they've had the chance to develop unusually with lots and lots of interesting traits that we collectors just can't wait to get our hands on. We have a Echeveria beside which has been spiking for ever so long. I have no idea when that flower is going to come because it just seems like months that it has been teasing me. I'm just moving back a bit. That's one of my, there, that's one of my normal nareens just coming into bloom. It will be a lot less spectacular than the hybrid. Actually, let's just have a look for comparison's sake. So there's the species one and there's the hybrid one. Much, much bigger spike. Okay, moving down and here we have cute little cactus with three buds and this cactus has just flowered all summer long. I have no idea why this year but it just has continued with the smattering of flowers the whole time and I have a second one as well which has done exactly the same so so pleased with that but I can't show you the flowers isn't that terrible. And here a syningia that it's its second flush of flowers and I think I missed the flowers first time round as well. This is a new plant to me, a codex plant. So down there we have a codex, but yeah, so we will see how we do with that longer term. And a cute little chrysula called Rhapsody in Pink that is pinking up. See there? <laughs> Isn't it nice? I really like that. I always look out for unusual succulents or cacti because you can get them so cheaply. If you go to any big garden centre, they'll have an amazing selection of little things for a euro, two euros, three euros. And even if you're short on cash, there's, oh, you know, if people can usually spare enough just to pick up one of these and so easy to look after. I mean, if you've got a sunny windowsill, well, your quids in really that's all these plants really need okay moving down and we have ha ha okay so we have two things here and this first one here is in glorious glorious bloom isn't that amazing absolutely amazing now this flower spends a long time coming, the spike spends a long time maturing and then you think it's completely open and then it spends a long time like that and then finally it is fully open and it is absolutely gorgeous and here's the plant which is not very attractive but well worth its place in anyone's collection. Behind the Crassula, we have a very strange looking plant with thorny branches stretching in every direction. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what this plant is. I will tell you though that it is a winter grower, so it starts into growth in winter and it has beautiful flowers. It has white flowers held on a stem, sprays of them. And look at the leaves, it's just coming into growth now, so these are the leaves. So look closely at the leaves. And jot down below if you can tell me what plant this is. There it is. It's unusual, it's not what you might think. So 
basically think a common garden plant or a common pot plant and then you'll be surprised to learn that this actually is one of those. I guess I will let you know the name of it at the end of the video. <laughs> Down here we have a cute little aloe. Look at this, this is a hybrid aloe. I did think to do a video about aloes, but yeah. And a recent acquisition, which is Albuca spiralis, a South African bulb, bulb that constantly has a bad hair day. Or is it a good hair day? You tell me. <laughs> I think it's fabulous. And one day I was feeling a bit down and then I got a message from my friend Liga saying, I'm in a garden center. Do you want Albuca spiralis? And it's just so wonderful when messages from nice people like that come from nowhere. And so she picked that up for me and I'm absolutely delighted with it. And moving down to the lower section of the staging where we have my South African bulb collection. And with in pride of place is this amazing bouffant there at the front, the one with all the beautiful, beautiful leaves sticking out. This is such a beautiful, beautiful plant that I'm delighted to have. And hopefully next year it will flower again. It has flowered for me once. Beside it we have Hymanthus albifloss, which I dealt with in a recent video all about Scadoxus and albifloss. So I guess I won't talk too much about that now. And then to the left of it we have my Veltheimia just starting into growth again. This is summer dormant with a very short dormancy period but it's coming into growth again now. I have lots of exciting stuff happening here with my South African bulbs but one thing of course is the Veltimia recently. Oops, can you see the flower spike coming here? So this is the yellow flowered Veltimia and it is going to flower for me. So I'll pop that back, but that's one piece of exciting news. And another piece of exciting news relates to this bouffant that I grew from seed. So like the one at the very front with the, with the leaves, the fantastic leaves, this is one that I grew from seed. But if we look very, very closely there, can you see that this leaf seems to have a white edge to it? Now is that variegation? Is it stable variegation? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I'm definitely looking on it as a good thing and well I want to I keep an eye, my eye on this watch it like a hawk and see how this develops. I have a couple more seedlings that were germinated in the same batch and none of them has it except this one so happy days. And just a little pan along this staging where we have some more succulents. The ones that don't look amazing at the minute. And I guess that brings us to the end of this October greenhouse update, which I hope you enjoyed. If there's a plant that you'd like to see more detail about or hear more detail about, then do let me know down below and I will do my best to make a video about it. Somebody suggested a video about nerines, which is, ooh, gosh, I've just remembered. My clivia is still under the trees outside. I need to bring that in. Why do nerines and clivia occupy the same space in my mind? Okay, I ramble. Okay, if there's something <laughs> that you'd like to hear more information about, then please do jot it down below. Sorry for the gushing here, but it's quite a windy day and the loose bu bubble wrap at the very front is blowing in the wind. Before we leave this video, just... A final word on this plant that I challenged you to tell me what it was. 
And I wonder if any of you guessed that it is in fact a pelargonium. Yes, pelargonium, the plant commonly known as geranium. But this one is a spiny one and it's pelargonium echinatum and a fantastic codex plant that is grown for its spines and its structure rather than its flowers. Right, and on that note, I guess I will leave you. And I think that rain lily is opening as we watch. <laughs> Wait till you see, I'll have said goodbye and it'll be wide open. But in any case, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. Oh, one final note. And many of you know that I have memberships open on my account, which means that if you sign up, you are eligible to get certain perks, such as specialized videos. Now, for a short time only, as part of memberships, I'm also giving away a free copy of my e-booklet, Growing Cattleyas on a Windowsill. My Windowsill Monsters, it's called. So if you sign up for memberships, you will get a free copy of this ebook as well. So really is good value. And of course, for my existing members, they're going to get a free copy of the booklet anyway themselves. So they won't miss out at all. Okay, that's all for now. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.